Well, uh, I think it is more of a protective device than anything else. Through the years, there's been a lot of changes made to make helmets safer. And I do think that the goal of which is to try to reduce the amount of head injuries they're suffered in the sport. High school football players face a bigger concussion risk, according to a lot of studies. Do you agree with that, and why is it? I think I think I think studies have, have definitely panned that out. That in boys' sports, football is among the top, and in girls' sports, cheerleading is among the top because of the amount of catastrophic injuries that happen. Um, in, in a football, for, uh, for instance, there's a practice week of, of several micro traumas with several hits to get used to the idea of how to receive and give hits, and then of course game night, those those hits can be magnified even at a higher level with the crowd cheering and their, all the excitement of Friday Night Lights. You know, Dr. Chan, a lot of a lot of experts in your field will say that, that it's not necessarily the big hits during the game that, that causes trauma that, that can lead to CTE over a number of years, but it's, it's, it's the practices every day. It's uh, um, death by a thousand cuts, for lack of a better analogy. No, I, I totally concur with that, and that's why... Uh, the article that we put out recently in, in the local paper about sensors in the helmet has been very helpful to me because when I show up on Friday night for a game to cover a high school game, and then there's a, a simple, you know, what I would consider a small event that looks like a, a small blow to the head or an athlete ball and hit the turf, and then they're down for a while, I always wonder why that might be the case. But when you look at the amount of hits they've had during the week, you can tell that they've had a week of several small hits that may have led up to this bigger hit. And the sensors we put in the helmets uh, of our athletes are able to tell me when I show up for a game the amount of hits somebody's had that are in a yellow zone, which would be less than 80 G-force zone, and any hits that have been above 80 G-force are reported as red. And they, they turn out onto my athletic trainer's palm pilot or, or iPhone, I should say, and they, they give us that information directly, and I can see which players we need to watch more directly. When you have, when players are wearing the smart helmets, the ones that record head hits, the, the ones you're talking about, it seems to be in a situation like that, wouldn't, it seems like there wouldn't be a lineman left by Thursday. Is, is Has that, <laughs> am I right? It, it, well, I mean, medicine is still clinical. If we take MRIs and CT scans, all these studies to give us information, but medicine will always be clinical, and the diagnosis of concussion is a clinical diagnosis. So what has happened in our situation, our school, is that it hasn't really changed the flow of the game any, um, which I've been really proud of. It's been more like we pull some athletes out in between their reps and take a look at them if they're starting to get several yellow or red hits, and we have a little neurologic exam and communication with them. And if everything seems to still be working totally normally, they don't get withdrawn from the game. They return but we're watching them more closely to see if a subsequent hit occurs that might lead to a further you know, change in their neurologic condition. Because for the most part, um, if the athlete comes and talks to you and you do a neurologic exam, and we're pretty good at knowing you know, what the vestibular dysfunction and, and balance issues and eye movements and all those things we look at to see if there's any changes, we have a pretty good indication about who it's safe to put back into the game. Dr. Chad Stevens, the the – these helmets, the smart helmets, the sensors, can they be retrofitted into existing helmets or do you need to buy a whole new helmet and how costly are they? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it, it is a, I know that it's, it's written up as a smart helmet. It's actually a sensor that goes to any helmet. So it can be retrofitted into any helmet. When the helmets go out for reconditioning each year, they can be uh, applied at that time. And it's about $100 per player is what it comes out as. But with that, what the families are getting is a teleconferencing capability for after hours, and they also get an insurance policy. So it's a kind of a three-pronged approach that this company, Head Health Network, uses. Should it be required? Do you think helpful. it should be required at the high school level? I think it will be at some point. I think right now there's only a few schools at the high school level using it in Texas. I know of a couple. Um, ourselves in another school in Dallas. And so I think it's going to catch on even more. It's being used at Division One schools for um, analyzing their practice and trying to decide if they need to make 
alterations in who's getting several hits during the week. And there's several other applications that are being involved. But I do believe a kind of a sensor, it may not be the exact sensor we're using, but some sort of a sensor will eventually be required at the high school level anyway. And, and probably Chan, in software football. Pardon me, you had mentioned a couple of seconds ago that, that the sensor in the smart helmet, when it registers yellow or red, is kind of a warning that a player has taken a lot of hits or a certain number of hits, and then you apply you a neurological test. Not everybody yes. can, obviously, high schools can't have neurologists on the sidelines. Are these tests that are something that are easily taught to trainers or game physicians or EMTs on site? I think the answer is yes. It's, um, now, there's many people that are more skilled in detecting concussions than other people. Obviously, those that see more and have more expertise are going to be better but many of the signs, athletic trainers are very astute at picking up, and as well as EMTs and team physicians. So I think there's some very obvious concussions that nobody, you know, outside of the, even the people in the crowd and the stands many yards away would know as a concussion. But there's some more subtle things that, that athletes need to be withdrawn from the game for just because of the fear of another impending hit.